is a <coughs> so what is up guys and gals long time no see now again I have had another big break from videos this time it was again three weeks or so without videos but just like last time when there weren't any videos for a while I was really busy and this time I was really busy doing something useful and that's that I put my brand new CNC machine to good use making the brand new D4A crankshaft position sensor bracket for the 4AG engine. Here you go, this is it. Let me, let me focus that. Look how awesome it is, super, super fancy and cool. Now let me focus myself. Ah, that's probably, see? This is the challenges you face doing everything yourself, including camera work, you know, car mechanics, cleaning, everything. Now, if you remember my old design, my old crankshaft position sensor bracket, uh, you probably notice that the new one looks completely different. Now, the new one is completely different because it's a million times better. Now, the old design was good too, and it was simple and inexpensive and allowed, you know, 4AG enthusiasts all around the world to, you know, easily attach a crankshaft position sensor to their 4AG engine. Now, uh, I have run out of stock, as you know, of that old design, and I have sold more than 50 units. But even though it was a decent design, uh, it was, it had two major drawbacks. Drawback number one is that it couldn't be used with AC. So if you had a 4AG engine and you needed to add a crankshaft sensor to your engine and you also wanted to run AC, that bracket was useless because its position interfered with the AC belt and you couldn't run AC. Drawback number two was that you couldn't mount your trigger wheel right behind your crankshaft pulley because the design wouldn't allow you to do that. So for those two types of, uh, you know, cases, of crankshaft sensor addition to the 4AG engine, that bracket was useless. So I decided to design, you know, a new bracket which would address those issues and be a complete solution for any sort of, you know, crankshaft sensor scenario on the 4AG engine. So the new bracket, it works whether you're running AC, it works whether you have a single uh, row pulley, crankshaft pulley, whether you have a dual, double row crankshaft pulley. It works whether you want to place uh, the trigger wheel behind the crankshaft pulley, in front of the crankshaft pulley. It works, you know, whatever you want to do with a crankshaft sensor on the 4AG engine, it works. And it works as long as you're running a 4A type Toyota oil pump or Isin or whatever, and as long as you're using a for a oil sump, it will work. You can use a MRP oil sump spacer uh, on your 7AG conversions, but this will run on any sort of 4A engine in 16 valve, small port, big port, uh, 20 valve, whatever is 4A, this thing works. If you're doing a 7A oil pump and sump, this will not work. Remember that. Uh, so, how does it work? Well, it looks really simple, but it's really, really versatile. And this time I made it available in several different versions. So you, we have the long one, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna run a Ford type uh, crankshaft sensor on a dual roll, uh, uh, dual roll crankshaft pulley, that's the long one. We have a short one, if you want to run a Ford crankshaft type sensor on a single row pulley setup. And then we also have a long one that is suitable for GT101 Honey Honeywell uh, type sensors. So that's this one, dual row uh, pulley, GT101 uh, Honeywell type sensors. And we have single row pulley and GT101 type sensors. So. This time we're working with two major uh, often used crankshaft sensors which are pretty much, you know, suitable for all kinds of aftermarket ECUs. Now, of course, 
the dual roll crankshaft pulleys work perfectly with single roll pulley setup so if you want if you have a single roll pulley you can also order this uh, you know because maybe in the future if you're thinking that in the future you might be changing your mind or your setup and getting a dual roll crankshaft pulley you can order the double uh, the dual roll uh, bracket is just five bucks more than the single roll but if you want something smaller and you know smaller in size looks I guess a bit more inconspic inconspic in conspicuous you can order the single row one so what else this time also this is a complete ready-made plug-and-play solution so this time unlike my last crankshaft bracket a sensor bracket this one comes with all the spacers all the bolts all the washers everything you need to install it and the install is dead simple so now I'm gonna show you how to install it so to install our crankshaft sensor bracket, we're going to need to access the front of the engine where the crankshaft pulley is. Once we are there, we're going to remove these three bolts. These are the bolts that connect your oil pan to the bottom of your oil pump. Once we have removed those three bolts, we're going to get our crankshaft uh, sensor bracket and we are going to uh, get our little cylindrical spacers. We are going to put the spacers into their little corresponding seat. Now, this side of the crankshaft sensor bracket, the one that has the little spacer seats and these indents right here, is the side that you are going to point upward when installing the bracket. You will also notice that the little cylindrical spacers have a tiny little interference fit with their seats. Now, this has absolutely no structural integrity role. It doesn't contribute to the stiffness or anything. The only purpose of this is to ease the install uh, and to help you not drop the spacer when you're installing the bracket on your engine. Now this is a very very loose interference fit so there's no need to hammer anything in. Just use your hand and push the little uh, spacer into its seat. We are then going to get uh, the bolts, the provided long silver bolts, put a washer on them and install the middle one and just finger tighten it very loosely just so the bracket hangs there. This is going to enable you to install the other two spacers and the other two bolts. Once all the bolts and the spacers are in there it's time to tighten the bolts. Tighten the bolts in several passes and of course do not over tighten them. They are tightened to the uh, same uh, torque specifications as the stock bolts do not tighten any more than that. So once the crankshaft bracket has been installed it's time to install our crankshaft position sensor. Now to do that the first thing we're going to need to do is to get our special little square washers and put them in their indents on the top side of the bracket. You will notice that the square washer slides nicely in these little rails but will not fall through the bracket. Once we have done that we're going to get the black bolt and put it to the, through the top washer. Then we're going to get another special square washer and put it on the bolt from the on the bottom side of the bracket. We are then going to get a bunch of little round standard washers and put them on the bolt. Now the number of these washer, washers depends on your particular trigger wheel and sensor setup. In my case I need five washers uh, to provide the perfect distance between the top of my sensor and my trigger wheel teeth. So once you have uh, put the little washers in there, put your sensor on there and you know finish off with the provided nut. Now finger, tight, uh, finger tighten the nut and once it's finger tight use a wrench but do not tighten it more than a quarter of a turn. A quarter of a turn with a wrench is more than enough to keep everything tight. If you tighten it more than that you risk bending the little uh, square washers. Now even if you bend them the bracket is completely uh, usable, the you know the, the setup will not fall apart, the little uh, square washers will not get, go through the bracket no matter how much you tighten it. I have tested that just to make sure but this might upset uh, the little uh, gap between your sensor and your trigger wheel teeth and you might need to put on more washers there or flip uh, the little square washers uh, that you have bent to make it work. So better safe than sorry, do not 
over tighten uh, the nut that holds the sensor in place. Now of course before we tighten the nut fully we are going to align our sensor with the trigger wheel so it's right in the middle where it needs to be. So once that is done all that's left to do is to connect uh, your sensor and fire up your engine. And there you have it, the brand new D4A crankshaft sensor bracket works. And if you want to buy it, you just gotta click on the links in the description. Now the price is pretty much the same as last time, this time it's just a tiny bit more expensive, but you get more bang for your buck, because this time it's a complete package with all the washers, with all the little, you know, spacers, bolts, everything you need, it's ready to install, and this time also, it comes with install instructions. And, like always, it includes free international shipping. So there you have it, the first ever in-house, you know, designed, prototyped and produced part made in the D4A garage on my CNC, made by an automotive enthusiast for automotive enthusiasts all around the world. Of course, all the profits from the little parts I make go towards supporting this build and my channel, you know, and our stuff I do, you know, to improve this garage and be able to provide you guys with better, more useful, more entertaining, more informative content. So, uh, what else? There will, of course, be more parts coming from the CNC really soon, so stay tuned. We'll be doing some redesigns, introducing some new parts, also some little fun stuff, gifts, whatever. We'll, we'll be having fun with new stuff the CNC can make. Also, I have made another really big purchase for a, another D4A project uh, that will be announced really soon, so stay tuned for that. So, that's pretty much it, it for today. As always, thanks a lot for watching, stay tuned to the D4A channel, and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and awesome stuff. Until then, see ya!